I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, peoples? How you doing? I want to welcome you to Late Night with Yaya Diamond on the DuPont Network as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You know, it is a blessing to see so many different people come on the show and talk about different things that they're doing and authors you guys know I love authors, like literally love authors. And I do have Keith Cooper here, and he's going to be talking about his book, Taking the Mask Off. But before he does, before he does, I want to say something because I read what he's done and and I I see something that really, really touched me. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go and just kind of bear with me for a second. It's, it says here that he's a pilot and engineer, a mathematician, a, sir, a soldier serving in the Pentagon when the planes hit during 9-11. Then later in Iraq, he served at the executive levels of corporations, and he just finished walking 500 miles across the part of France and all of Spain. And now he's writing his memoir focused on his experiences that led him to this topic of mental health. You know, I think that we need to really pay attention to this. Mental health is a big issue, not just with all different kinds of races, but in every race and in every area of business. And then, of course, in the, the soldiers that went out and protected us and kept us safe and fought for justice for us. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much, Keith Cooper, for doing that. And welcome to the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you. Thank you. What I, I have to go back. I, I mean, this whole book, Taking the Mask Off, is about you. But before we get to the book, who are you? That's a great question. Uh, I, I think, you know, it's been said that who you are is not what you do. And it took me 50 years to figure that out. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, it's still a journey to figure out, you know, who you are and and what you find is that all of us identify and we say, who are you? They are a pilot, I'm an engineer, I'm a mathematician, I'm a radio host, I'm a CEO. Well, that really means that if you quit being a pilot, if you quit being a CEO, that you're nobody? No, what we are is we are people, spiritual people. We are people who have a certain religious background. We are children of our mothers and fathers. That never changes. So that 50 year journey took me from identifying with a, a, a topic, an idea, and uh, something I could attain versus my inner soul, my inner being. And so who am I? I'm a child of God. I'm an African-American. I'm a citizen of this country like you are. That's who I really am. That will never leave me. I'm a, a son of wonderful parents who are now in heaven. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a father to wonderful kids. That's who I am. And it just took me so long and to really come to the grips of that because that's the importance and the foundation for who I am. Mm. A lot of people go through that. I am this, I am that. Yeah. But you are much more than that. It's such a blessing, such a blessing. So the title, Taking the Mask Off. I got to ask you, did you, did, did you write this before COVID or was this kind of something that kind of happened because of COVID or, or had nothing yeah. to do with COVID? And probably the middle uh, it had something to do with COVID because I was isolated. Like many of us were sitting in our, in our rooms and, and I'm single. So I was at home and I lived in uh, in winter park up there. And uh, every night I, or every morning I come down and meditate a little bit and I journal and the whole process of journaling was really to capture my thoughts. So it was written during COVID when we had the mask, but really what I learned is how many masks I had, how many imprints have been put on me because I had all that time to think because I was isolated like many others. And so written during COVID, but not really about COVID, it was about my life and my journey, which is a continual journey. And what COVID allowed was a time to do it and the environment of masks with all of us. But it really said, you know, this is not about an N95 or KN95 or whatever you want to call it. This is about the mask we wear, the callus we grow as we get older and older. And, you know, it all goes back to who our inner self is and taking these different masks off, conformity and everything we always talk about. So that's really what happened. Yeah, I agree with you. A lot of a lot changed. A lot of people changed. We and we had time to really think about who we were and what we really wanted to do with our lives. 
That's correct. That's a lot of people, a lot of people changed. I quit my job during that time too. And it, it just, it, you know, but it, it took me through a moment to understand that I didn't like the way I was going. And right. if I had continued, I probably would not have been happy with the person that I would have become. And that is a mental crisis within itself, you know, mental health. Wow. I mean, when you, when you think about this, which way did you want to go and did you change it all after COVID? Well, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, truthfully, I've been climbing the ladder so fast for all my life, whether it be in the military, the corporate world, it took me COVID to realize that my ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. Okay. Mm. I was looking, I was looking at attaining these objectives that I had to somehow, you know, go to the next run, go to the next run, and not really looking where I was going, only to realize I got to the top and no one was there. And all I would offer people to do is, you know, it's never too late to change where you're going. You know, as, as we've heard before, it's, you know, it's always the right time to do the right thing. And, and what you realize is as you get older, and, and I'm much older than you, is that the, the, attainment you have of things, whether it be the boat, whether it be the beautiful home, whether it be the, the new car, you hit a point where you say attaining things is not as important as legacy I want to leave. So I hit that halfway point of saying, it's great to say what you have, but it's better to really come up with what's your legacy going to be when you leave this earth. And you start changing that. And that's when my ladder changed. And that's why COVID, that isolation period, gave me time to think and write this book. You know, short stories, three to five pages each with questions at the end, which make you ponder and make you think. Realistic situations that occurred to me, things that I don't want others to have to go through that they can look at, put themselves in place and say, ah, I see what happened here. Let's think about it. Let's talk about it. So, yeah, that's what happened, just as you identified. Yeah. You know, I, I look young. <laughs> I'm a grandma three times, but um <laughs> Yeah, I have three grandchildren. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. It, is, it, is. it absolutely I think, is. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think that this this whole mental health thing, did you go through a mental health crisis yourself? That's a good question. I, I don't know if I went through mental health crisis like any soldier leaving the war zone. You're, you're evaluated as PTSD, PTSD, or something like that. And, um, and I, I came out fine. Having said that, I went to therapy. And I would tell others out there, that the most important thing you can do is admit that there is a problem and get help. And what we have in African American communities, you know, is there's a real shortage of psychological help for African Americans, three percent, as a matter of fact. So we look at the African American community, which comprises 13, 14 percent of the population. Let's just say, you know, in the area of you know 13, 14 percent of that population, let's 22 percent, 23 percent, like anyone else, has a mental health issue. That's seven million people. So I went through the process and I was really lucky to have a great therapist. And I write about that in a book. The first opening part was talks about what my first task was. And mm -hmm. so I went through that whole process to get through that. And, uh, and I still go through it, by the way, it never ends. But just like you and I go every year to get a physical, we get our blood checked and we say we're okay. Well, we need to check what's above our neck, not what's below our neck. And, and what's above our neck is probably more important than what's below our neck. And that's what I realized in this whole process. So I didn't go through a crisis. But yeah, yeah, I went through a realization. Mm. Yeah, you know, a lot of Black people don't go to uh, therapy because that's not for us. Yeah. That is a crock of, okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you, it is for us. We have okay? to. It is for us. Yes, it is for it us. It is for us. Yes. It definitely yes. is for anyone who needs it. Regardless right. of where you come from, your color, your race, it doesn't matter. It's for whoever needs it. And yeah, yeah, I would say sometimes we don't know we need it. Just like you go to the doctor and you don't know what the problem is, you depend on a doctor. But I think that yearly checkup ought to be not just your blood test and, you know, the doctor hitting your knee with a hammer. It ought to be someone who's a professional in your area that's certified to say, hey, how am I doing? Here's what's going on in my life. And it's not that anyone out there, as I write in a book, has any disturbing issues, but our world is getting a little crazy. I mean, there's some Little? things going on in our world that are complex. Uh, I mean, I won't say the good old days were good. Okay, don't go there. However, they were somewhat predictable. But what's going on now with what parents have to deal with is just astounding. And the help we need is not about parents, me, you being out of touch. It's about the world is 
kind of going different directions. And we need someone to put that in perspective for us sometimes to keep us on the right track. Definitely, definitely. What do you want people to come away with when they read this book? I mean, what is the common denominator? Is there like a math or something to that effect? I mean, what which side do they need to be on? The side they need to be on is that be vulnerable, be open, be non-judgmental. It can happen to anybody. And it's not about something happening. It's about preventing what might happen. It's about really looking at yourself. It's about changing your thoughts from saying, you know, pointing the finger to saying, I'm sorry. It's, it's about being a little bit more empathetic with your neighbor. And it's about realizing that as you go through your journey, sometimes, you know, pursue your passion. Don't pursue the checkbook. So it all boils down to opening your thoughts, opening your eyes, opening your mind. And really, the one thing I would say is make that transition from your mind to your heart. The longest 18 inches in the world, okay? Trying to think with your heart for once, not just your mind. And just think about what a better nation we could be across all races, all cultures, all religions, if we start thinking about that. You still may make the same decisions. I don't know. But try to be who you are. And, you know, don't always try to be someone else. And strive to be the person you want to be in life, okay? And, and, and keep that journey in mind. The journey sometimes is a reward. And that's what we have to look at. That is, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. Now, there is a confusion. I'm I'm a little confused because the book says 200 stories. Yeah, yeah. But there's only 65. Um, Where, where are the others? Are you Three writing words. the second one? Three words. More to come. How about that? Ah. More to come. More to More come. To come. Okay. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about a little bit about, you know, other things in that next one. But, uh, I thought 65 would kind of prime the pump. I like that. I like that. That kind of leaves me on the edge. It's a cliffhanger there because I was like, where are the other ones? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, now I want the other ones. I want the others, yeah, good. I want good. the others. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, my goodness. You know, I, I was thinking about the stories in there and, you know, we get so, um, because I started writing too, you, you know, we get so hooked on our characters and the stories and we become a part of it. It's like, you can see it, you can visualize it. Which story is your favorite? You know, the one I'd say is my very favorite is the one I write about, I'm trying to never be, I would say a bad person. And, and the title really starts about and takes off from the movie with Denzel Washington, who's one of my favorite actors. And he's he's in his, this movie called Flight, right? And uh, I don't know if you read or, or read the book or saw the movie, but bottom line, he's an airline pilot. So I, I love that part right there, right? And the plane goes upside down. He saves all the passengers, but he has a problem uh, with alcoholism. So at the very end, he's actually uh, arrested in the movie and he's put in jail. And he's estranged from his family. And the son comes to visit him. The son's in college and he goes, hey, son, how you doing? You know, what's going on? And the son looks at him and goes, well, dad, for my final project, I'm writing a book. I'm sorry, I'm writing a paper. And Denzel goes, great. What's the paper on? He goes, the paper is on you, the greatest man I never knew. And so I never want to be that person with my kids. I never want to be that person with my friends. And, and I think going up the path of the wrong ladder was leading me to being the greatest person no one ever knew. And I don't want to be up there alone. I don't care what the consequences are. So that's my favorite story. And it's kind of a from to story of how I'm going from, you know, things and to things that matter, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all those things and, and that I move along. And I share that with people so they understand that someone like me who's gone to West Point, been in the Army, gone to Ranger School, been in the Pentagon, been in Iraq, you know, all the things you could label as being this hard person who doesn't have to show emotion. You need to show emotion. You need to say, I'm sorry. You need to cry. You need to doing that. The worst thing we can tell our, our sons are, you know, be a man, because what does that mean? You know, let's hug our sons. Let's hug our daughters. Let's tell them we love them every day. Um, even if we never got that treatment ourselves, because with what's going on in the world right now, we need to know we love each other and it does take a village. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. My gosh, my goodness. You put, I mean, you said so much. Let me ask you a question, though. I mean, I know your favorite story in the book. 
But yeah. how did you write this book? Was it because of the journaling? Was it always something that you knew you were going to do? No, I wanted to write it to have, at the time I lost my mom to cancer during COVID and I was really in, in a deep right. depression about everything. And I said, you know, I didn't know a lot about my mom. Obviously I, I knew, you know, she raised me. Then at 17, I took off to go to West Point and go in the military. So it was always a visit. But I wanted my kids to have an idea of, of who I was. And I don't mean just, the, you know, the name tag I wore, but who I was. And I think this journaling was a way I was going to leave behind. And then all of a sudden, the journaling led to my therapy, right? I mean, you're writing, so I'm like, boy, this is very selfish of me. So I wrote it, and others who read some of the stories said, you need to publish this. And not just because you're kids, but there are a lot of people like you. And Yaya, you know your audience better than I do. There are people out there who think they're fine. There are people out there who think they don't need this. You know, I would say that the book is meant for anybody and everybody. It doesn't talk about the mathematician, the pilot, the journalist. It talks about us. It talks about just the things we have to do. It talks about being human. And that's really why I wrote it to show, look, if I can do it, journal with me, try the same thing, meditate, sit. And the, the more you do it, the more you'll like it. And those who say they don't have time, well, wake up 10 minutes earlier. <laughs> just, just get up 10 minutes earlier. I and say that. pretty soon that'll be 20 minutes. That'll be 30 minutes. And it'll be the best time of your day. I said, you guys know I say that. You took it out <laughs> of my mouth. <laughs> he took it out of my mouth. Okay, so the hardest thing I find to do is to, to describe something you just done in 10 words or less. Yeah. So in 10 words or less, <laughs> Describe your book. Um, a foundation-based mind-to-heart journey. Is that like 10 words? No, it's less. You said or less. Okay. I said, okay. You said or I'm less. Right? That's so foundation -based cool. Foundation-based mind-to-heart journey. That was five or six words, I think. I did yeah, okay. it was. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did good. You, did good. <laughs> you know what? And I think that people will see themselves in this book a little bit, if not a lot. There are a lot of people like me who I knew my father, I talked to him, but what was his favorite color? Yeah, right. I don't know. What was his middle name? Right. I don't know. What did he like to eat? Yeah. I'm literally telling you, I'm asking the question and I'm answering you about my own father. Right don't know yeah so knowing the man and knowing of the man are two different things they are. And I think we go ahead yeah and, and and the cool thing is that not only knowing the man and trying to understand but how about knowing the mistakes that man made but not just the mistakes but how they got back on track just like your relatives told you your mentors told you it's not what you do. It's more important about what you do about what you do, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you make that mistake, and I talk to people when I teach them to fly all the time, you're gonna have emergencies, okay? Sometimes you can't prevent those. It's not the emergency that's gonna get you in trouble, it's how you handle that emergency. And that's the important part of this book because it goes into saying, here's a story, here's what I did wrong, but here's what I did about being wrong, and here's what I wanna think about it, and it also puts some questions at the end because we all go off path. And when I went off the path of looking at, you know, the cartoons of Dr. Seuss and be who you are, you know, say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind, all the way to looking at the religious aspects of, you know, God and then what my parents taught me. When I veered off that course, that's when I got in trouble. But I always knew the right road to go on. Mm -hmm. How did this book help you? I mean, I, I'm just, I'm very curious. I know that you said writing the book yeah. is, you know, the best thing you could have done yeah. in, in, in its entirety. How did it help you mentally? I think it helped me when others would read some of the writings and say what it did for them. Mm. Like many things, helping someone that provides more therapy than you many times, the volunteering you do and others do, you find you know, they say thank you, but boy, you feel a little guilty because guess what you did? You know, you, you got the thanks out of it. So it helped me by knowing that I'm helping other people. Um, it helped me by knowing I'm providing a legacy for my kids to know who I am. So they know my favorite color and, you know, everything else and all that. That's where it helped me. And it continues to help me when I hear thoughts from the audience and readers saying, hey, thanks. You opened my eyes. I'm now 
realizing I'm okay, or I'm getting help I need, or I'm giving to someone else. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much for being on the show. How can people find your book? It's on Amazon, but my website is www.longlakelore.com. And that's www.longlakelore.com. Um, Long Lake is kind of a place that I grew up that I love in my heart. And uh, I named the uh, website after that. And there's a little biography of me and a picture of my parents and I back in 1968. It's been a long time ago, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, won't go any deeper than that. But, uh, and, and it talks about how I wrote the book and also is a little link to buy the book. But, um, but that's how they can buy it. And, and, you know, I hope they enjoy it. I hope to get feedback. I also have a website uh, available for them they can look at and also email. And I get like these comments because I want to get those other stories out too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. I definitely appreciate you, Keith. And we're going to have that information in the description box below so that it'll be easy for you guys to find it. It's also at the Yaya Diamond Book Club. So if you go to Amazon and you go to the Yaya Diamond Book Club, uh, and I will put that link in the description box below as well. So it'll be easy for you guys to find that. I, I literally think that mental health is is on the precipice of a catastrophe. And if we don't do something, at least for each other, at least in your own neighborhood, at least have some kind of an open something, especially with the new generation, we're we are destined to just fail. <laughs> that's, I mean, it is nothing else. I mean, I mean, I can't even like sugarcoat it. It's it, that's what it is. You know, and I appreciate what you're doing, Keith and uh, Mr. Keith Cooper here today to let you know that it is not a shame to get help if you need it. If you don't know you need it, if you think you need it, if you even have the inkling that there might be something you need to talk about. Go get professional help. I want to thank you guys so much. And uh Taking the Mask Off is by Keith Cooper, and that's the interview we just did. If you missed this interview, please don't forget to go back and listen to it. If there's something that you resonate with, please leave your comment or go ahead and go to the website, which is in the description box, and leave your comment there as well. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until next time, guys, bye. Perfect.